All right, well. Welcome, everybody. Uh, all right. Uh, OK. A lot of, lot of familiar faces. So uh, uh, although this is the, I guess we're the first talk, uh, and although this is the first sort of user digest and the first Wikimania with, with user digests, um, so despite this being the first for lots of things, um, I've been doing this for years. Uh, uh, this is the, welcome to the state of Wikimedia's uh, research 2000. Oh, wait, the date's wrong. Uh, uh, this is 2015 to 2016. Uh, hopefully, the rest of the slides. Yeah, the date, the space was good. Uh, okay, so uh, I've been doing this for many years, including last year, and forgot to update part of the slides here. Um, I started doing a version of this talk in 2008, and have been doing it almost every single year since at Wikimania. I had 2011, I think, I had off. Uh, this began really as an excuse for me to make sure that I was up to date on Wikimedia research. I am uh, a Wikipedian, uh, but also a researcher who studies Wikipedia. And so staying up to date on this stuff for my job as a researcher is sort of important. So back in 2008, I set out to run a session at Wikimania that would provide a sort of comprehensive literature review of articles uh, about academic articles about Wikipedia that have been published in the last year. Um, uh, this is from the description of my 2008 Wikimania submission that said, basically, I'm going to provide a quick tour, a literature review of all of the papers that have been published on Wikipedia within the last year. Um, uh, then, of course, two weeks before Wikimania, I, did, uh, I decided it was probably about time that I should start preparing my talk, and I did a sort of uh, Google Scholar search to see what, would, what had been published, in fact, in the last year on Wikipedia. And what I saw was uh, the bit right there is the part to pay attention to, that there had been 800 papers published in the previous year on Wikipedia. Um, I actually tried to import this list into my sort of bibliographic management software, Zotero, and uh, I got banned from Google Scholar because they thought that no human could, no, could, could realistically or for, you know, read all of those 800 articles about Wikipedia. So I had a 45-minute talk then, uh, which I worked out to about three and a half seconds per article. Um, uh, and uh, over time, this has grown or sort of stabilized. And of course, this year, the talk is even shorter. Um, I have, along the way, been joined by a couple people. Aaron Shaw, who was not able to make it this year, but who is here in spirit. And um, uh, Tillman, who'll be uh, giving part of the rest of uh, sharing this and presenting some of this work, who's been helping uh, with this process as well. So uh, in any case, the, 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 the point is that academics write a lot of papers about Wikipedia. Um, there's sort of a graph over time. Uh, there are uh, more than, you know, there are hundreds of papers published about Wikipedia each year. Uh, we've sort of reached some kind of like peak Wikipedia research maybe in 2008 or 10, but we've sort of just stabilized it somewhere uh, in the realm of 500 papers a year. Um, uh, we're slowing, but not by much. Uh, if you look at one of the big uh, sort of scientific data sets of articles about Wikipedia, you see that there are 6,000 uh, papers with Wikipedia in the title or abstract. Um, uh, and that over time, as our community has begun to try to systematically track this, uh, um, we are covering in the Wikipedia research newsletter, which we'll talk about a little bit at the end, um, uh, hundreds, usually in the range of about 200 different articles each year, which are uh, read by some member of our community, summarized uh, in a newsletter, and sort of written up uh, and published once a month as part of the signpost. Um, the newsletter uh, aims to be aims to be comprehensive, um, never succeeds in doing so, um, uh, and uh, very often uh, tends to skip papers that are about Wikipedia, but only in the sense that they use sort of Wikipedia as a corpus. Now, the result is that this paper has, or this presentation has lots of issues. Here's my sort of disclaimer slide. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of issues uh, in the sense that this is very selective. Um, uh, the, 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 the basic idea that we've been trying to do each year has been to not describe everything that's been done in Wikipedia, because that would be hundreds of articles or research that's been done about Wikipedia, but to give you sort of a snapshot to generate what uh, I think Aaron and I sort of often call research postcards that give you a sense of the kinds of stuff that's being done out there. Um, 
uh, the result is that we try to settle on five or six articles, um, which we'll talk about. And so for, the, for this talk, uh, what we're going to try to do is give you a sense of what's going on in Wikipedia research, um, uh, to raise topics that will be talked about in lots of the other sessions while we're here, um, uh, and to do so by highlighting papers that are representative of important themes from the last year. So uh, we'll talk about five papers in this uh, in this talk, um, and each, uh, each one for, you know, like a lightning talk about each paper, just three and a half minutes or so, um, and each one of these uh, will represent what are kind of a, a, an important theme within the last year. Um, we also tend to select stuff that will be of interest to uh, Wikimedians, and also, and this is um, often the hardest one, we try to select research by people who are not going to be at Wikimania, because of course they're going to be here, they'll be in the sessions, they'll be able to talk about their research. We want to give this as an op uh, use this as an opportunity to highlight uh, work being done uh, maybe by members of our, the broader research community, Wikipedia research community, but those who uh, can't always be at Wikimania. Um, uh, we also tend to have a bias towards peer-reviewed publications. All right, so with that little uh, um, introduction aside, I want to um, hand it over to Tillman, who will start us off with the first two of these little research postcards. Okay. Cool, yeah. So our first topic is the gender gap of Wikipedia, which has, of course, received a lot of attention to lot, um, which has received a lot of attention over the past few years. It started out by just examining the demographics of the editing community. Most of you know that it's been um, the numbers different, but between 80 and 90 percent of uh, editors are men. So there has been a focus on what uh, effects does this have on Wikipedia content. There's varying. It's not quite uh, clear cut, but this paper will give uh, some answers. The other strand which I want to mention is, is more about the causes which we're kind of leaving out, but I was still one of the things about this too. So we picked this uh, paper as a representative, which um, is a pretty comprehensive overview uh, by a, a Finnish researcher, Martina Saar, and um, she, covered, she used various data sources, and one was well, kind of a novelty. She actually went out and did a survey and experiment with uh, Amazon Mechanical Turkish, So which is a frequent method of social research, right? You draft people and give them some tasks, and these were invited to edit Wikipedia, or would say if they would like to be edit Wikipedia. Then she looked at content, uh, data set of biographical articles from English Wikipedia. And then some, you have the option of Wikipedia to state your gender, not many people do it, so it's kind of, you use it with caution, right? It's kind of biased to people who are comfortable stating their gender in public, but you can use it for some purposes. And then she also looked at popularity of articles by page views. And here's some interesting things what she found. So first, the, um, the number of readers per, per editor is higher for biographies of women. Another way to put this is, I'm trying to grab it like this. Um, another way to put this is, um, there's a very long tail of articles of men which are less popular than articles about women, actually. So um, the first thing you see is, on a typical day, no one read 26% of male biographies and 16% of female biographies, which, of course, for both is pretty high, actually, if you think about it. And so she didn't go into reasons, but you can think of various, I mean, my, my personal hypothesis is there's a lot of sports articles, footballers, that kind of thing, which happen to be male. But it's something to be, that's quite interesting. Then she looked into causes by, mean, by asking these people um, in the survey and um, five looked, had the hypothesis that the reason the half of the gender gap is explained by the frequency of Wikipedia use, i.e. how much are you using Wikipedia anyway, and then belief about your competence. So according to her results, the gender competence can be due to women believing they're less competent or underestimate their competence to edit Wikipedia. We should say there's some other research about this too, actually by Aaron Shaw, who's missing now, so we could actually talk about his paper. Um, he had done some research about competence and uh, gender fits in editing. So um, this is not the whole result, but it's a very interesting one. Last, lastly, um, as you would kind of assume, is women are most, more likely than men trust us, like, to contribute to articles about women. Um, and I think the interesting, most interesting thing and something that other people haven't done 
So there's been a lot of outreach, right, about how to we do our digital gender gap. There's lots of editathons. Many of you will heard of the um, art and feminism editathons. We've been really successful in generating participation, dividing articles about women. But what she did was um, she found out that this kind of outreach can actually backfire. So the A-B tested uh, these two messages. They invited people to contribute and had two different sorts of introductory messages on Wikipedia. One is um, they said that they highlighted the gender gap. Wikipedia has been criticized for having only 90% female contributors. And the neutral message, just the basic about Wikipedia, started in 2001, 4.5 million articles. And what they found is that the highlighting the gender gap actually discouraged contribution, especially among men. And it did not encourage contribution about women. I think this is a pretty uh, astonishing, I mean, she actually said it was astonishing and relevant result, right? By uh, choosing how to, to focus on this problem, you're not, I mean, we Wikipedians, we are like to fix problems, right? We see that we kind of, yeah, let's do this, fix this. But a lot of uh, general public, part of a general publication are actually discouraged by this. So there's some, something messy here. I'm going to spend my time elsewhere. Cool. Next topic, student use of Wikipedia. There, are, of course, um, there's a lot of papers in general about the education program type of thing, so article assignments. Um, as most of you know, this has been very successful in the last few years and goes back 10 years or so and it's been done on a wide scale since half a decade. And what happens is that lots of professors who do this after they spend a whole term doing uh, article assignments, um, of course they want to get a paper out of it. So you see a lot of case studies. Hey, I asked my students to edit Wikipedia in my class and so these are not super interesting but they make a lot of the literature you're seeing about students in Wikipedia. Uh, we picked another paper, which is about how students use Wikipedia as an academic source, i.e. for their work. And um, they had some interesting results too. For, so it was a survey at two Australian universities with a fairly large sample size. There are other papers with only like 100 or 200. And um, again, they were asked if they use Wikipedia for academic work and if yes, if they found it useful or not. And among many other sites, like on the one hand, like your library websites, ebooks, um, academic software, Twitter, which rank pretty much at the bottom, Facebook, that kind of thing, YouTube. And the result is not super, um, I mean, it's like kind of in the middle of the pack um, regarding frequency of usage and regarding perceived usefulness. So it's channel like, yeah, it's good to get a first start. Um, it's not good for uh, in depth research, which I think most Wikipedians. I kind of agree, right? That's what an encyclopedia is. And I should say the, the, the authors seem to be very skeptical at, about Wikipedia in the beginning, so that's kind of kind of read, read this in the paper. But, um, and okay, one interesting part is also related to gender, which was that um, the usefulness was, uh, was more useful, perceived to be more useful by males than by female students, which is kind of interesting. And, and one should say that this is largely related probably due to um, difference between academic subjects. So people found a much more, Wikipedia much more useful in engineering, computer science, STEM, um, also law, <coughs> than education. Education was like at the bottom and social sciences, which are of course more female dominated uh, subjects. And um, so, but that's so interesting to know, right? We're kind of failing. We've seen it's pretty successful in hard sciences but Wikipedia is not seen as very useful in plus science education. Cool. With that, I'm going back to Mako for the next topic. All right. Okay. So, uh, this was like the year of, uh, or the last year, maybe something that's happened a little bit over the last two years. It was the years of physicists studying Wikipedia. Um, and uh, I don't know, I drew the short straw on trying to summarize the stuff. I'm not a physicist. Um, uh, but uh, there were a whole bunch of different articles published in the last couple years, um, and in the last year in particular, that tried to essentially use physical models to understand Wikipedia. Now, the basic approach of this kind of work, I'm going to summarize one piece by a group of people, including um, Taha Yasser, who's come to Wikimedia in the past, Wikimedia in the past. I don't know if any of the other people have. 
um, a piece published in the European Physics Journal. The approach of this kind of work is to sort of start out to create a mathematical model of a particular phenomena. Um, uh, and then the goal is to show that by using a small number of variables, four or five variables maybe, you can make really good predictions around certain outcomes. In this paper, the goal was really to predict the amount of conflict. Um, conflict in general, they were interested in a model that would pr predict conflict. They're like, insects fight and monkeys fight and so he, people fight on Wikipedia too and we're gonna study that. Um, that's like the first three sentences of the paper. Um, so their mathematical model uses uh, uh, a, a couple different um, variables, and this is sort of showing um, uh, one output of their model. Um, basically, this is a phase diagram, which basically, the way to think about this is that everything on top of those lines, and uh, since the lines are about the same, I'm not gonna focus too much on what that variable is, but the, the, the solid lines with the dots. Everything on top of that is a situation where there's uh, low conflict, or conflict which is resolved. Um, and everything below those uh, diagrams is, uh, uh, below those lines are situations where you have but what they call war, but basically lots of sort of persistent conflict. And the variables that they use in this um, uh, are, are, are just a few. Um, they use uh, uh, essentially this idea that there's a certain kind of threshold for a conflict, which if you want to think about it in Wikipedia, might be how, um, like, uh, when are people willing to compromise? So if you're fighting with another person, when are you willing to change your position? Or if you're working on an article, when, uh, a Wikipedian, when might you be willing to let, uh, you know, let that thing go? Um, they, uh, the, they also uh, include the, ri the, the chance in which new people will become involved, right? People that haven't yet come to some agreement or compromise. And that's shown along the x-axis, the number of um, uh, new, new people. The basic takeaway is this, that if, you have a, if you're at the very top of, uh, top of this, if you have a very low threshold to compromise, basically you're willing to put up with a lot, then things can s s stay peaceful, um, even, it, um, uh, even if people disagree with them, uh, even if lots of people are, um, are joined. And if you have a very low uh, threshold to, comp to compromise, it's going to be perpetual, what they call perpetual war, um, uh, even if you don't have a lot of new people joining. But that for most area, most kinds of thresholds, what you see is that, there, th that it really is a function of how many people are joining. If you have lots of new people, it's always going to be fighting, and if you have few new people, um, uh, uh, it'll always be peace. Now the real test of any of these physical models is to say, okay, great, we created this mathematical model. Now if we take data from uh, a real thing, does it work? And, what, and this is their sort of graph trying to show that. What they, what they do, the x-axis here is the y, is the y axis, the amount of controversy, the x-axis is the number of edits in a particular pe um, uh, period, and they look at three articles, um, which uh, um, one is the Jilan's Post and Mohammed cartoons controversy, the second one is Iran, and the third one is Barack Obama. They correspond to what they call uh, articles with a single war, with war peace cycles, and never ending war. Barack Obama is never ending war. Um, uh, and, uh, and they basically show that in fact their model predicts something which is very, very similar to what you see in the real article, um, in, in the Wikipedia articles. So the takeaway is that their model works, at least that's what they would like you to think. Okay. Um, the, the second thing that I want to, um, article that I want to highlight is uh, an idea, is really this idea of Wikipedia and, and media ecosystems. And the idea with this is that there are lots of people who've studied not just Wikipedia, but how people talk about Wikipedia in other places, on other platforms, on Twitter, in the news, um, and how Wikipedia can be used to reflect the way that things are happening in other spaces as well. So for example, um, there were a couple interesting papers published in the last year on Wikipedia and its use in Twitter, um, on on Wikipedia and its use in Reddit, and on Wikipedia in the news, so a bunch of work in that space. But what I want to highlight is this one article that does looks at it kind of the other way. It looks at, it tries to understand the effectiveness of academic uh, research and of um, sort of publishing by looking Wikipedia as an outcome of impact, right? So the idea would be that they will say that an article is sort of high impact um, if it's mentioned in a lot of Wikipedia articles. Um, they, uh, uh, they do this by taking uh, all of the references to all Wikipedia articles and by, by, uh, um, l and by taking uh, the top 250 journals in 26 different uh, fields and by looking at the proportion of articles published in each of those journals that is referenced at least once in, uh, in Wikipedia. Um, this is sort of their, um, uh, and the, uh, one key thing they're really interested in is the difference between open access journals and non-open access journals. 
Um, uh, what they find is that, generally speaking, as articles have a higher impact factor, which basically means that they're cited more by other articles, as journals um, have a higher sort of average number of citations, that those, those, that those journals tend to have a larger proportion of their uh, uh, articles uh, included in Wikipedia articles. You'll see that the numbers are still re re relatively low. The average is about half a percent of all articles in a journal, um, even for the top 250 journals within each of these areas. But what they do find is that open access journals are much more likely um, to have a, uh, to be cited in at least Wikipedia article than an article in a non-open access journal. So it's sort of held up as evidence of the effectiveness of, um, of open access. All right. Okay, so that, now we come to our last topic, um, which is, um, again, most of the research about Wikimedia but is about Wikipedia. It's, um, about 95%, if you look at Google Scholar for the last two, one and a half years. Um, but there's some about sister projects, and these two sister projects which are most uh, popular among researchers are Wiktionary and Wikidata. And I mean, there's reasons for that. One is that they um, offer reusable data for research, which is kind of attractive, right? In the case of Wikidata, it's structured machine-readable information, and uh, Wiktionary is a pretty much a dictionary in some respects today. And um, so there are lots of computer linguists who, um, who uh, use Wiktionary data compared to other dictionaries, that kind of thing. And so, but it's mostly about the content that they want to use. But there's some papers who are also about studying the community process itself. Um, for, I'm going to focus on Wikidata. If you're interested in Wiktionary, in the research news, we had a, a special issue kind of last September, September 2015, with several Wiktionary papers. So I would encourage you to check that out if you're interested in Wiktionary. Um, so this paper is about um, Wikidata. It asks the question, uh, yeah, peer production system or collaborative ontology engineering effort. So for those who know the term, ontology is um, basically the term for organizing the world. Can we say that? Are there any philosophers here who will kill me now? Well, <clears throat> so that's kind of what you're doing with this kind of structured data product. And it kind of projects from a bottom-up um, peer production efforts like Wikipedia, or you can like do top-down like the Jewish system, where it would be, we produce the structure first and then fill it out. So they started this empirically by um, looking at uh, 160 million Wikipedia, Wikidata edits and classifying them and into action types. So um, one is to you create items. So for those now don't know details of Wik, um, Wikidata, it's organized in items, which is, in this example, United States of America is one item. And then there are statements about them, like the highest point of the U.S. is Mount McKinley. And then a lot of editing work also goes into descriptions and labels. Also, for example, in other languages, or in a summary, it's a country in North America. If you don't know the name, that gives you context. So they uh, looked at all these edits and classified them. And... This is what it looks like over time. So again, this is the first two years of Wikidata. It started in October 2012, kind of slow start. And um, then you see uh, blue, hopefully. That's creation of items. Um, Wikipedians know that was a time when we imported all the Wikipedia articles or sets of Wikipedia articles across languages as Wikidata items. And you can see it still makes up the bulk of items. So there are new items coming in, but not too many. And after that, the um, the uh, red thing is um, editing statements. Again, what's the population of the city? What's the highest point of this country? That's a statement for an existing item. And then item terms, that's the paper's term for um, labels. Like I said, you could ask at the Italian description of the United States, that kind of thing. Um, cool. And then I have to harass a bit through this. But what I also did is to uh, classify editors into different participation types. So I'm not going to read all of these. Um, there's something I call a reference editor, which is kind of misleading. It's people who add site links, add new Wikipedia articles, um, people create items, people who edit these labels and um, descriptions. And then there are some people who actually add information in terms of new statements. <coughs> And they're focused on something what's called the, they call the property engineer, which is people who add new properties. So that's like um, we introduced the property 
highest point of a country. And that's the most structural work, right? That's what you not do every day. And you actually need a special user right. And this is kind of interesting because I think, um, I mean, every, give me a person, ad admins, right? But usually they don't have special content privileges. And every day that's kind of a bit different because for this special task, you actually need to be, um, and the sort of reason why you don't want to happen what, what happened back in 2004 when categories were introduced. Um, I was there, I remember it was, it was a good old times when developers could switch something on without asking a community. So people just went there and created a bunch of categories without any system. And it's kind of, a leader can confirm that, but that's what Wikidata wanted to prevent. So that's an element of the more top-down structure, right? <coughs> so, and they have, yeah, they have a nice classification, how frequent each type is. But the conclusion is, it's this tension Wikidata has between this classic peer production bottom-up and ontology engineering, so collaborative but more planned. And they kind of criticize the uh, interface a bit for facilitating the uh, peer production, what Wiki edits, but not the planning. And could speculate that it could move more towards the more centralized, more pre-planned. Okay, that's the last thing. Um, let me wrap up by pointing to further sources. Again, the uh, research minister, which um, I'm edit the editor of together with uh, Dario here, who will focus a lot on our Twitter feed, which is, should all focus and um, user Masley who's helping us a lot, and a lot of contributors. So if you want to uh, write a review or some of your paper you find interesting, please come and see us. Then um, the annual Wiki Focus Conference, OpenSim, which is also happening again this year. It used to be called Wikisim, it's now called OpenSim. Uh, Co-chair of, and which will be, uh, and which will be in Berlin in August, uh, if you're gonna be around or wanna make the trip. Yeah. So again, um, Mako is heading the wiki research track, which is still pretty strong and, strong and open sim. There's the wiki papers uh, repository, which collects a lot of wiki references and much more. One thing I want to point out is um, there's an effort on meta called the Codex, Research Codex, which is kind of an effort to cover specific subjects, kind of what we're doing here, right? Collect all the papers or important results from that area and make it a bit more accessible. Guillaume Pommier, from my colleague from the foundation, started that. Cool, uh, then that's it. I don't know if you have time for questions, or? Probably not. Or not. <laughs> okay, thanks. Great.